have one last topic left in our first module, and that is the introduction of the concept of relations and functions. You know, we use the word relation in our life all the time. I say, my mother is related to me. My sister is related to me. So a relationship is basically a connection or a comparison between two or more items. So we will focus on two items or characteristics that are connected to each other. For example, think of students in our class and their height in inches. We could display these set of data in table format or in ordered pair form or pictorially. So in table form, I'll have names of my students and then height in inches. And so we have an ordered pair here. You have name, inches, name, inches. Another way to represent the same data would be in the set notation. Curly brackets represents the set and ordered pairs. So Robert, 72 in the parentheses is an ordered pair saying 72 inches corresponds to Robert's height. And then we have four students, so there are one, two, three, four such pairs. So this is called set notation. Capital letters are reserved for the name of the set. Curly brackets is used to identify or to write our set in the expanded form. And so here we have a way to describe relations between students and their heights. As you see, two people could have different names but can share the same number for their heights. Or you could also have two people with the same name but who are completely different heights. Or you can also have two people who have the same name and have the same height. The name of the person in this relation is called the input or the domain, while the height of that person in this relation is called the output or the range. Well-behaved relations, where if we know that the input, uh, if we know what the input is, allows us to see what the output is, is called a function. In other words, for one input, there is only one output. So in other words, one person can only have one height at a time. Can't have two heights in the same moment for that person. So that would be a function. So name versus height would be a function. An example of the relationship before uh, was name of a person with its heights. But now let's take a look at another relation. Suppose x. The person X is the input, and their sister is the output. This would not be a well-behaved relation, and so we would not call it a function. Why is that? Because one person can have several sisters. And so you don't have a unique sister associated to that person necessarily. So that's why this relation would not be a function. Another way sometimes people write functions is using two variables. And by the way, we're only concentrating on functions of one variable for our discussion purposes. y equals 3x plus 1. So the input x is any real number, and y is the corresponding output number. This is a relation between x and y. And in our case, y equals 3x plus 1 happens to be a function, because for every input, 3 times x plus 1 produces a unique number. In order to distinguish two different relations, like y equals 3x plus 1 and y equals x minus 5, we need a different notation so we don't confuse the two y's. And so we will start using the notation f parentheses x. And what that means is not f times x, but you read that as f of x. f of x equals 3x plus 1 g of x equals x minus 5. It is absolutely essential that you learn how to read mathematics correctly. Reading and writing mathematics correctly helps your brain process the logic behind it appropriately. Oops, sorry. If you look at the notation f of x equals 3x plus 1, then f is called the name of the function and the input x is called the argument of the function. And f of x is called the output or the range. If you look at all the x values that you can have for input, 
we will say that's the domain of the function and all the output that comes out of a function is called the range of that function. To understand f of x equals 3x plus 1, let's imagine this. It's almost like you have an input of x, then you get 3 times x plus 1. But what if you change the input of x to something different? Let's say t. Well, then t would have to go in place of x. So you would have f of t equals 3t plus 1. So wherever there is x, we replaced it with t. What if I want f of a plus h? Then you're going to take the whole a plus h and put that in place of x. So it would be 3 times a plus h plus 1. If you have this whole object here, then you're going to put that whole object in place of x. So 3 times all of that plus 1. That's how you um, evaluate functions. So if you have f of x equals biological mother of x, here all human beings would form the domain of the function and all moms would be the range of the function. What if I say s of c equals social security of c? Here all US citizens or legal aliens in the United States is the domain and all the social security numbers given out forms the range of the function. You can also use whole words for the name of the function and different letters or words for the input. For example, Celsius of temperature equals 5 ninths of temperature minus 32. Do you recognize this? What do you think that is? This is a way to convert Fahrenheit temperature to Celsius temperature. So for example, if I told you um, Fahrenheit temperature is 104 degrees, what would be Celsius 104? So to compute Celsius of 104, you first have to take the temperature and insert 104 in it. So everywhere you see temperature, insert 104 and then simplify. And so you'll end up with 5 times 8 or 40 degrees. You can see 104 minus 32 is 72, 9 goes into 72 8 times. So if I told you Pune, which is the city where I come from, that summers are above 40 degrees centigrade quite often, then you would be able to understand what that is here in United States because 104 Fahrenheit makes more sense to you, but 40 degrees centigrade might make more sense to people who are working with centigrades. So it allows us to go back and forth between centigrade and Fahrenheit. So another example a function, let's take a look at uh, a definition first. I think all of you are familiar with absolute value, but just in case you're not, absolute value notation, you have two vertical bars and an x in between. It means distance of the number from zero. So absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is also 2 because both 2 and negative 2 are 2 units away from zero. So if I define my function absolute of t, equals absolute value of t, then using that definition, evaluate these. We will pause for a minute for you to evaluate it. Remember, you're just simply putting the number in place of t. So go ahead and do those, and then we'll talk about the answers. And then you can check if you got the right answers. Now that you're familiar with how to represent functions and relations algebraically and understand them, let's take a look at graphical representations of relations and determine from the graph whether the relation is a function or not. We saw that a relation is a function if for every input x you have exactly one y coordinate output. So in a graph, that would mean for every x value, there's one y output and not two or more outputs. To determine from a graph whether y is a function of x, uh, take a look. You look at a vertical line, and if the vertical line, when it moves across, intersects the graph in exactly one point, you have that that relation is a function of x. In this particular case, Every time you had one x input producing one output y, that's what this vertical line really is doing. So that's called the vertical line test to determine 
whether a relation is a function or not. So in this case, y is a function of x. Let's look at the next function, uh, next relation, I mean. Let's look at the next relation. So if you take a vertical line here, look what happens. For every x input, you have output two y outputs. Let's do one more time. Here we go. So as you go up there and down here are two y outputs for every single x value. So in this case, y is not a function of x. Let's look at the next example. And you determine, just looking from a graph, pause the video and determine if this circle, uh, y, is a function of x or not. Again, here's a vertical line. And you can see when it moves up and down two points of intersection. So it is not, y is not a function of x. So using objects we have so far developed in the module one as functions, then we'll call it specific names. So here are some examples. A constant function, output is constant no matter what the input is. So for example, if I write f of x equals 5, then that's a constant function. f of 0 would be 5, f of 100 would be 5. No matter what the input is for x, the output is always 5. So f of 2 thirds would be 5, f of 100 would be 5, f of negative uh, 3,456 would also be 5. So here's an example of a constant function. Exponential function. We saw that uh, x is a real number, and we put the x in the exponent, and a is a fixed positive real number. Then we have examples of exponential functions. For example, 2 to the power x. So if I want e of 3, then 2 to the third, which will give me 8 e of 1 third will give me 2 to the 1 third, which is our cube root. Remember this radical notation? So this is acting as a good review for all the stuff you've already done. 2 to the negative third would be 1 over 2 to the third, or 1 over 8. Uh, polynomial function. So here's a function uh, where when you plug in x for a, a real number for x, you plug it into this polynomial. So p of 2 would be plug in 2 everywhere you see an x, and then compute it. So p of 2 would be 9. If you want p of 0, put 0 in for x, and you'll see p of 0 would be 7. A rational function, just like we have rational expressions. So if you write a function r of x equals a rational expression, 3x plus 1 over x minus 1. We also have to make sure x cannot be 1, because if you put 1 as your input, the output would not make sense. And you want the output to make sense. So if I want r of 4, then you're going to have r of 4 evaluated to give you 13 thirds. So here's your last set of video lock questions for this module. And then in the next lecture, we will do a review and give you more uh, examples to work on.